out to Abiquiu. Which is a little courageous since we uh, had a pretty heavy snowfall last night. Um, don't know what the roads are going to be like all the way there. So far, no problems. Uh, roads are pretty clear and they've been salted. Doesn't look like anything too hairball to deal with here.
legendary place to hang out. Mexico is really beautiful when it has a fresh blanket of snow. All the little pinon trees kind of stick out on the snow like spots on a Dalmatian. part of Española here we're driving through. teenager growing up in Santa Fe, we were usually afraid to come to Española, didn't want to get our asses kicked, um, like this area now. It's still a bit wild here, uh, a bit wild westish. There's recently been a feud between the sheriff's department and the city police department. resulting in the sheriff being uh, stripped of his license to his law enforcement license, I guess. Um, but he's an elected official, so the city couldn't fire him. He works for the county, and he was elected by the county. Guess he just can't on patrol or whatever, I don't know. I don't know the results of the case. I do know that the sheriff was actually jailed. And they jailed him in a different county for his protection, I imagine. And uh, right here I'm on the road going out of Española towards Abiquiu.
had a lot of really beautiful women in my life. Uh, single right now. Most of my relationships didn't last more than a couple years. There was one woman I was with for maybe, I don't know, six years. with women now as I used to be. When I was younger, I was very successful with women. I, uh, I was able to communicate with them better, I think, than I am now. I almost always had a girlfriend times more than one. And I realized later that I had a lot of issues, problems uh, that interfered with my relationships. I did a couple of years of really intensive well, not really intensive, but let's say an hour a week, uh, I'd go and do some one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling. And I did that for a couple of years, and it, it really helped me to understand what it was that was interfering with my relationships. And I mostly been single since then. Uh, I mean, I've had girlfriends and um, sex buddies, you know, of women who were willing to kind of have sex with me without any real big commitment. Um, so girlfriends, I guess, uh, but no real serious relationships live in, you know, I mean, there's been uh, women in my life, but um, I think, you know, now that I've, I've discovered, you know, what, what makes relationships dysfunctional, and what makes them unhealthy, you know, what makes them codependent, what, what is codependency, and, you know, which is really what kind of drives all, all relationships. I mean, we're all codependent to some level or another in every relationship, but um, there can be really unhealthy uh, codependence between people I've tried hard to avoid that. Um, so if there's any sign of, you know, the old patterns of, you know, abuse, uh, like, by that I mean mostly like verbal abuse, because um, guys, we get a hard time for, like, you know, they call men abusive, you know, a lot, and it's not always clear who the real abuser is, um, sometimes they've learned now that, uh, women do, can do a lot to, I'm not saying in every situation, but in a lot of situations, women can do a lot to instigate the violence, and, um, and there's a, a very subtle form of emotional abuse that women are great at. Uh, and some men endure it for years and years and years and years and years before they finally snap. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's not always clear who the abuser is. And, um, 
what drives verbal and domestic violence, but most of my relationships were pretty rocky and uh, pretty uh, fraught with, uh, you know, if not physical violence, uh, verbal violence, you know, like a lot of arguing, just very passionate relationships uh, because um, I'm a passionate guy and uh, I had jealous, jealousy issues. I had a lot of problems with jealousy uh, in my relationships. I had problems trusting um, my partners. Uh, and there's reasons for that. I mean, some of that is justified. Um, I chose women who weren't necessarily you know, very loyal to me. And that was the issue I had to deal with, you know. I'm not saying all women are, are disloyal, but the ones that I kind of would tend to involve myself with, um, usually were, you know, they had their own issues. So, can't really blame them, you know, just, it's just the things, that's how we, what we do, we, and that's one of the things I learned in doing the counseling was that that's what we're doing with relationships, um, sexual relationships, we're trying to uh, resolve unresolved issues we have with our parents, you know, um, or other significant caregivers. Um, and that's why we often choose relationships that aren't really that great for us. We go through strings of relationships that we repeat the same pattern of uh, they all don't work out for the same reasons and you go on to the next. So the only way to break those patterns is to, you know, well, I might not be the only way, but it's the only way I could think of was to do analysis, you know, with a, with a counselor. You, you talk those things out with them and try to figure it out what it was. that drove you to that, you know, those kind of relationships.
problem with dating in your 50s is that by the time any of us get into our 50s, we're all essentially crazy. Which is why when you go on a date in your 50s, someone else in their 50s, they seem kind of crazy. And it's not just you. I mean, they're going to think you're crazy too. And so you're just sitting there trying to gauge how crazy the other person is. And if you can put up with that craziness long enough to have sex with them. assume that the older we get, the crazier we get, and the harder it is to find someone whose craziness you can stand to be around. And proportionately more difficult to find someone who's willing to put up with your craziness. It's only during the last couple of years that I've come to realize that I've, I've never done anything right my entire life. Always at the critical moment made the wrong decision. Or behave selfishly when I should have been giving. Everything I've done Basically, my entire life amounts to one big mistake. Even when I got it right and did something right, it was always too little too late. Never enough and not in time.
Roman times, humans rarely lived past 35. It was the average age of death, 35. Nowadays, if you're lucky enough, smart enough, to avoid getting killed from somebody else's stupidity or your own, before you make it to 50, then you have to face the inevitable onset of disease. Heart disease, cancer. Respiratory illness. Lupus, shingles. what have you. And as long as the ailment As long as the suffering caused by the ailment outweighs your fear of death, or until the suffering from the ailment outweighs your fear of death, you will suffer. You will suffer from the ailment until you die. die from the element or take your own life in some other way. Dating sucks in Santa Fe for a guy my age. I went on a few dates. And it seemed like, uh, All these women that I met through online dating services, um, they all seem kind of the same. Like, kind of like cookie cutters. Cookie cutters of the same form of woman. Um... become kind of a cliche in Santa Fe. We've got a lot of people who come to Santa Fe and like to think of themselves as being spiritual or woke people. Most of them are anything but woke. And spiritual, what does that mean? Well, I guess that just means they're trying to be better trying to gain some kind of insight beyond beyond the material world. Excuse me, I had a hiccup there. Uh, and it's a little frustrating because uh, you go out with these women and because they think of themselves as being so woke or highly enlightened, they automatically assume that everybody else is not woke or unenlightened. And they feel like they've got the need to educate others. They want to share their wokeness. Uh, and it's just painful. Um, I 
really beautiful sunset going on over to my right. I can't show it to you because I'm driving, but take my word for it, it's gorgeous. Maybe we can uh, pull over up here somewhere and I'll, I'll give you a view of it. All right, well, it's sunset. This is Daveny, recording from uh, the top of Fort Marcy. And uh, it's not like it was when we were kids, I'll tell you what, it's all developed now. Some of you might remember when we burned a car up here, a look car. Me and Ty had bought it for 50 bucks. I think we each chipped in 25 bucks to buy this car. And we drove it all around one day when we bought it and then we realized it didn't have an oil plug. So uh, we towed it up here and it was Halloween and there was a party uh, up in Hyde Park Estates. And everybody left the party and came down to watch us burn the Lacar. And uh, and then we all left and went back to the party, except for Josh Wadley. He stayed. He stayed and watched the car burn all night, he told me. He said the cops never came. Fire department never came. I guess they just figured it wasn't necessary. You could see the car burning up here from all over town. I'm surprised that. Nowadays, something like that happened. You'd have the fire department there, the police, maybe even the National Guard, you know. Beautiful sky tonight. Sandia's over there. And then over here, we've got the Hamus Mountains. Light is fading. And I think there's a fire going on. Uh, you see that cloud there. It's not really a cloud. I think that's smoke. And it goes all the way along the mountain range there. And I think uh, there's some smoke drifting around. It's got to be a fire. It's got this grayish color to it. And it's hanging low because of the cold temperature, I guess. Uh, you can see it over there, too. I don't know if I can zoom in on it. Yeah, I can. There you go. You can see that's definitely smoke from a fire. If we look over here. Yeah. That is smoke from a fire. There's Adelaide Mountain over there. Talaya and Adelaide. Over there we've got Sun Mountain and right behind it you have Moon Mountain. That's the end of another day in Santa Fe. I'm thinking I'll uh, come up here when it gets warmer and get some time-lapse shots of the sunset. That should be real fun. Hang out up here and just take time-lapse shots. All right.
Let's go back to the truck. Uh, burr, it's cold. I should have zipped up my jacket. the old days, I'll tell you what. We used to uh, come up here every night at sunset. The whole tribe of us Santa Fe kids and hang out up in these hills right here and drink beer get high and do whatever we wanted uh, and no one ever messed with us we were free we didn't have to worry about cops coming around and hassling us we didn't have to worry about security coming around now if you try to do that in any of these neighborhoods here you'll have a security guard on you in no time uh, no bonfires in the hills anymore uh, back then you could have a fire no one would run up and stamp it out <laughs> I have a watch, I have a watch that uh, that my mom gave me and I remember at the time I, she sent it to me for my birthday and, and she was real hot on it. She called me up and asked me, oh, what would you think of the watch I sent you and I really didn't like the watch. It was uh, a piece of crap that she'd gotten for free or something and some some mail order scam and uh, I tried to use the watch but it didn't seem to really function it was so cheap that it just it didn't really work but I was able to uh, set an alarm but I wasn't able to set it for the time I wanted it to be um, and then uh, I was never able to turn that alarm off, uh, but I still have the watch now that my mother has passed away. She passed away just last February, uh, February 2020, uh, February 18th, and uh, and now uh, when I'm I'm sitting in my apartment. Every night, the watch goes off at a specific time. The alarm sounds, and I love it now. I love the watch now because whenever that alarm sounds, it it's it's like you know my mom telling me you know I love you. Like it's kind of like the, you know every time it it rings, it just reminds me of that gift from my mother and and even though I didn't appreciate the gift at the time now I, I, I really cherish that watch uh, love it very much I guess we should stay around a little longer for what remains of this sunset. I think it's 
the big spectacle is over. Uh, I was a little late to get up here too. But, uh, Life is such a kind of funny joke on humanity. Not just humanity, I guess. I guess all life. Here we all are, just kind of a manifestation of the universe itself, and yet totally at its whim. Just a big cosmic puzzle. We're here for a very, very short time in uh, in the great bucket of eternity. I mean, we're we're a tiny moat, tiny moat, lost in a cloud, an endless cloud that we can't see any end. Too. just endless galaxies spreading out forever and ever and ever and ever as far as we can see in this sort of sponge-like kind of pattern in space this 3D kind of sponge-like pattern we know that our galaxy and most of the galaxies around us are all moving towards a some place we don't know but we do know that our area of the universe is is being drawn towards some great attractor they call it and, and we don't know what it is we don't know what the great attractor is What's drawing all those galaxies in? And there's this other group of galaxies we've observed that's moving towards some other great attractor, some other point in the universe. We don't know what's attracting them. What is drawing them towards it? You would assume it's gravity, but I'm I'm not sure I think the theoreticians have ruled gravity out but, but I mean that would be the logical assumption wouldn't it Of course they don't know what gravity is either so And here we all are for a very very short time and then we're gone I know some of you believe there's a life after you die or whatever but you don't have any reason to believe that. You don't have any evidence of that. You don't, you know, there's no reason to speculate what happens after death because there's no reason to think that anything happens after death. I'm convinced that after death, we just cease to exist, and our consciousness ceases to exist. No reason to assume otherwise. I know that's depressing to most people, and it makes life seem really meaningless, but life is meaningless, and you just have to accept that and 
try to stay alive as long as you can because that's that's the nature of life but we're all going to the same place we can't avoid that all of us meet the same end some sooner than others but we're all all mortals all right well there's your New Mexico sunset and your philosophy session with Davini I hope you uh, I hope you all find great joy and happiness in all of your endeavors I love you all each and every one and uh, yes even those of you who have not been kind to me I love you too just because you're humans just because you're humans and you follow your nature and there's nothing else you can do peace and love y'all see you in the next video okay